Hello there. Today we're going to talk about Focus Max 4 in the aspect of using your Focus Max 3 data files. I'm not going to really talk about the First Light Wizard or creating it. Um, I'm going to go in a different route. So, a couple things to note. We have Maxim DL6 opened and connected to a simulator camera. And we are using ACP, that's what I use. Uh, this is what I use for my uh, telescope control. Uh, if you have the Sky X and you're using that, then that works fine. And let's bring up Focus Max. So, when you see Focus Max for the first time, this is basically what you see um, the log window is open and uh, the main windows here. Uh, you have uh, two systems here actually. Uh, Focus Max version 4 now actually allows you to autofocus two independent systems. Uh, that would be good if you needed to autofocus, for example, your guider or some other telescope that was attached to your telescope. Uh, you could maybe have two telescopes and a guider, for example. Um, and then you would just use these two to focus the main telescope. And then of course uh, your log file is actually here too so we don't actually need this window. Uh, I like this. I prefer this uh, being all confined in one spot. That's just me. If you want to get it back you just double click and it returns. Um, you can always set everything on top and matter of fact we're going to go ahead and do that so that when another program comes this will this will be available. So um, the first thing we want to do is we need to copy the INI file over to uh, where it needs to be. So if I come up to version 3, which is all that's here now, I'm going to right click and copy this. And then I paste this directly into the version 4 folder. And you can put it here, or I usually put it in a data file, so it's just me. <coughs> OK, so um, we're going to go ahead and select that. And it's the RC10, that's my data file. And we're good to go. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go into the open menu and go under preferences. This is actually where um, a lot of things that you have seen in version 3 exist. However, um, uh, it's a different, little bit clean, cleaner layout. Uh, for example, you have the autofocus here, and you'll notice all this is empty. Um, you focus your settings, so and so and such and such. Um, the first thing we're going to do is uh, select the telescope. So we'll move this over so we can get to the ASCOM chooser. And here's where you would choose your telescope. Most people are going to probably choose the Sky Control Telescope. Um, if you have an astrophysics, you might use the ASCOM uh, driver. So if you have ACP like me, you'll want to use the ACP Telescope Hub. That is actually um, the much better way of doing it. And then you'll click Properties. Um, Okay. Now you'll notice that uh, the INI file actually filled in the Maxim DL, and this is system number one, and I have a QSI camera. Uh, if if you were doing this from new and you were not importing an INI, you would actually have to come and select these, and then select the number, and then go from there. Um, so we're also going to select the focuser, and I am using the simulator here. And of course you have to do the properties thing if you want. Uh, so you click properties. And then that, that's fine. We'll just say okay to that. Um, actually I meant to pick the simulator. I don't know how that happened. Okay. Uh, simulator. Okay. Alright, simulator. That's what I need one to pick. Okay, so now we're ready to connect things up. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and connect the camera. And when you do see that, you'll see that um, this is underlined, and that's underlined. That means we have a connection. We'll go ahead and connect the focuser. Now when we connect the telescope, um, because we're using the hub, ACP has this connect option here. So, but we, we're not going to do it that way. We're going to go ahead and connect right through here. Now we're, we, we get a message saying that's complaining, probably because I'm the way I got things set up here. 
So um, it just all it did was opened another ACP, so that's fine. Uh, so as you can see, um, uh, you have uh, it's all telescopes now connected. Okay, so we're done with that. Now if I come into the autofocus tab, you'll notice that uh, when we connected to the camera, all these filters got filled in. Um, that's just wonderful. What's even more wonderful is that we can set a minimum and maximum exposure for each filter. Uh, so for example, the hydrogen alpha filter, you might want to set a minimum exposure of maybe one second because it's such a dense filter. Um, same thing with the base exposure. Maybe you want to go longer than that. Um, if the, um, And you can also change the, the flux numbers if, if you're always getting a bright star, for example. Uh, Focus and Max has two methods now, standard, um, which I assume is what the third one, version 3, used to do, and the advanced mode. Uh, this advanced uh, feature is fantastic. Uh, my system is an oversampled uh, system, and I don't have the best seeing conditions. So usually my half-flux diameters after a focus run is usually between 6 and 7, occasionally in the 7s. Rarely would I get a half flux diameter less than six. Um, with this new advanced mode, I'm actually seeing numbers uh, between four and five. Rarely do I get over five, but I never get six and seven anymore, even in somewhat poor conditions. So uh, this is really uh, a big plus. Now it takes a little bit longer to focus, I believe, but believe me, it's worth it. I also use focus convergence, and when you first see this, you'll notice the de it, the default's usually two. It's just because I've been here before. Um, you need this is fantastic. It's it's kind of like a fine focus, you might call it. Um, it really does an excellent job, uh, but you have to work with it for a little bit. Um, it turns out, um, ten steps works best for me. And then I also use this return start position. Now you see it's set for seven, but since my focusing numbers are getting so much better, I'm going to change that to six. What happens here is if the half flux diameter is greater than six, uh, focus max will fail the focus and return to the start position. Uh, I've modified the ACP code that it will actually retry and do a, another focus run to see maybe if I can get, a, get it slightly better than what it got the first time. Uh, but since the new advanced mode I've been using, I, I almost never get over 6 anymore. Okay, And then these settings are similar to what um, uh, version 3 had. And here's your telescope information. Um, I use Acquire Star quite a bit. Matter of fact, um, I, I pretty much live on it. Uh, Acquire Star, pretty much you set up the parameters of what you want to do. Uh, in the ver new version, you can actually set uh, exposures, minimum, and maximum magnitude of stars for each filter. So, for example, and these are pretty much the defaults. Now, for example, I actually do better with a uh, from a six point to an eight magnitude uh, for a luminous. And now that's the only one I need to check because I actually tell ACP to um, use my luminous filter all the time for focusing. But if you're actually going to focus between each filter, then this is really a big plus. Um, this is normally ch unchecked when you first come in here. Um, I do go to the zenith, so I do check it and, and it, and I don't want it to do a meridian flip. Now it might be a little bit faster if, it, if I went ahead and checked that, because it gives it a little, few more choices to look around for a star. Um, but I, I keep this unchecked. Uh, the return slew returns back to um, the position before you actually start the focusing acquire star. In the pinpoint, you pretty much select your catalogs. And the default catalog actually is, um, I believe this is actually the default catalog. But um, I actually use um, the USNOB. That's just me. Then you select the catalog here. And there's my catalog. It's 80 gigabytes. That's why a lot of people don't use it. Um, and maybe I don't really need it. I don't know. But that's what I use. Um, this is important. Um, more so if you have ACP. Um, you need to do test pinpoint. Because what that will do is verify 
what version of pinpoint you actually have um, if you have a full version or not so that's important and then the plate solve uh, you decide what bending do you want to pick for a plate solve I like to go fast so I'll do go three by three and then you can set your bending scale if you know what these are you can just type them in or you can just use this calculator and enter your focal length and your pixel size so however you want to do it lastly this is all the information where everything's stored and if you do have ACP um, since it is a web-based uh, automation interface uh, which is one reason I actually got that um, you want to send log to ACP. So, okay, so everything's connected. And, um, oops. Okay. So, if we go to profile, you'll see all the data from your profile has been loaded from version 3. Um, you can actually graph this data and I've been told that you want to keep your curves uh, underneath this dotted line and above this dotted line so for example if you feel that this one's too close you can actually exclude it by double clicking the no now that will actually change these numbers a little bit by doing that but um, it's kind of up to you and you just have to work with this um, I'm still not very familiar with this, but um, I have fussed with it a little bit. And, um, and we're good to go. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, at that point, as you can see, everything's ready to go here. Um, and um, if I wanted to, um, again, I can disconnect and reconnect things from here just by doing that. And you're set. So this is Focus Max 4. Um, be sure to visit the uh, CCDWare support forum and post any questions you have about needing help because I have to tell you, Steve is fantastic about uh, getting back to you. So enjoy the day.